Welcome back everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today we're doing something a little different, a little special. Um, I was the winner at Dee Dee Willingham, and you can find her on the internet here on YouTube. Um, check her out. Of this coloring lamp. And this is a new uh, business and they're um, from Vancouver, I believe, Canada. And they, Ian has figured out this awesome way of displaying your coloring in a lamp form. And in the kit, there's two sizes, I believe. And in the kit, you get these, uh, two of these coloring pages, I guess you could say. Um, I'm not sure what type of material it is. It feels like a mylar, but it does feel like a uh, some kind of a coating that's on the very top of it. Almost similar to uh, clay, I, I would say. And uh, I've been experimenting just on the border here, and this border won't show. And the border, if you can see it here, I've been just seeing what will stick to this. <laughs> and that's the way I roll. <laughs> and uh, so I've used a lot of different product here, and there's quite a few things that will actually stick on this and stay fairly um, stable. And so you don't have to just use your alcohol markers. The only thing that would uh, lift was watercolor. So it will go on, but if you were to get it wet and um, the wet would stay on there, it would mark it for sure. But I'm not sure if you could probably put a silicone spray on this, I think. I haven't tried it. Um, so I've done different types of alcohol, different types of things that you probably wouldn't think of using. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use a marker. You can use a paintbrush. Uh, the marker does leave lines. Um, when it's lit up, you will see some lines in it. Um, depending on the size of paintbrush that you're using and how wet it is, will show how much line work. But if you're using alcohol inks, so you can use these alcohol inks that a lot of us have been using for making really cool designs. I did try it on here to see what the spreadability was and it didn't really, it moved a bit, but when I went to put another color on top or the uh, emulsion um, that you put on to make it move, it didn't move. So it embeds itself in whatever is on top of this drawing. It was very interesting. I also tried the Liquitex uh, acrylic inks and they will also work and they stay in place. And a lot of the alcohol inks, or not alcohol, uh, a lot of these inks are transparent and if you the more transparent it is the more color you will get when the light is on um, I also tried <laughs> Lindy's um, sprays and you could use these with a paintbrush and it also works here I put it on as a part of a spray here and as you can see where it was condensed, it left a darker um, print. And then I just used a water or a paintbrush and spread it out. And you get a fairly even um, amount of color with less streaking in it, depending on how wet your brush is. So I thought, you know, there's a lot of ways you can use this. 
uh, to give it different effects. Textures would be another thing. Um, I also tried out the Bombay inks. They also work because they are permanent once dry. You do have to make sure that they are dry though um, before you tr try and go over them with another color. But they do work just as well as the alcohol inks. So if you want to black out stuff, you could use the black Indian ink. Um, I did try some craft paint, and it's actually not bad, as long as it's dry. Um, this I used because I was thinking of blacking out some areas in this, so the light, when it's on, just goes through certain spots. So craft paint worked. Um, the artist grade is not bad, but you could use crap paint. You just have to make sure it's cured before you um, uh, try washing it or something. It takes about 30 days for the artist grade to cure properly. But I believe it, would st it does stick to this very well. So I don't think you get... Um, with normal use, uh, any chipping. Um, what else did I use? I tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, I tried using different things like, uh, oh, pan pastels. <laughs> yep, it works. Actually, there's a tooth to this. It feels smooth. It feels, um, it's not slick. It does have a bit of tooth. It's very similar to the feel of uh, Upo paper, uh, but it, it reacts a little differently. Um, Upo, you can wipe right off with alcohol inks and um, uh, pan pastels. With this, I couldn't. Even, even if I tried putting... Um, Thinner on my cloth, it still didn't come off. So it, it stained and stayed on. So that was very interesting. Um, so I know they do sell sheets without the pattern on it. Uh, I believe they're $12 a sheet. Um, so if you are thinking of making something from your own designs, that would be an excellent idea. You could uh, paint, you could use pan pastels, all kinds of stuff. Um, the pan pastel, um, now I'm rubbing it here and there's not, there's very little coming off and it doesn't seem to smudge. So it might be an idea to play with. Um, I also did daubers. What else did I do? <laughs> I had all kinds of stuff out. Different markers of Copic. I have the Faber-Castell pit pens. They work beautifully. So if you have those. And paint brushes. So it depends on the texture effect because you got, you have, the one thing you have to remember when doing this because it's going to be backlit. Hi Rhonda! Uh, your strokes in, will show through. That's when you see your strokes. Hey, Julie. Well, that's fine. Uh, I was just explaining that I used a whole bunch of product on the bottom here just to see what it did on this paper. This paper, or mylar, I'm not sure what this is, but it does have a coating on the top that takes color really well, and it seems to... Uh, really keep it in because um, I use Lindy sprays, uh, craft paint, pan pastels, watercolor, um, Indian inks, <laughs> elect or uh, acrylic ink, and yeah, I got my lamp and uh, I find it really adheres to this coating, whatever is on. Yeah, thanks, Dee Dee, so much. This stuff is really cool. 
like it's got a lot of possibilities to, like even just the um the blank ones because i was <laughs> playing with the bottom here and what product would go on here and stay on and there's quite a few actually hey Devin, good to see you and Dee, Dee pan pastels <laughs> yep it actually adheres quite well to this. Um, it's a different effect. It's not really condensed, but it does stay on. It doesn't, it's, uh, it's almost like this has got um, like a ceramic coating on it or something. Hey, Kim. I used Indian inks. They stayed on. Lindy sprays. They stayed on. Uh, acrylic ink also stayed on. In um, this is craft paint. This is a um, uh, artist grade, and it peeled off. Maybe I don't know five minutes after I painted it, but once I heat set it, it doesn't peel off. So if you wanted to black out some areas, you could do that with the craft paint. Now, I don't know how um, opaque it's going to be once the light's on, because as you know, you will see those brush marks. You see your, your um, marks with your markers also. So, but look at the Lindy's, how neat the spray effect would be, because you could actually mask out areas and spray if you wanted a really neat background. Or uh, stenciling areas. Um, have you checked which ones left the light shine? Yes, I did. <laughs> I've been experimenting. Um, the Lindy sprays will leave the light through. Uh, I don't know if you can, it's kind of hard to show it. But I did put my, oh wait a minute, here I'll put my, um, my flash, my light from my phone on. I'll just turn this upside down. Uh, this, these things are so big, it's going to be different, uh, a little difficult showing this. Uh, Okay, that's alcohol inks that we play with. So it doesn't move as much when you just drop it. Now this is done with a paintbrush. Um, that was actually watercolor, those zig markers. Watercolor. Um, that was... Um, The Lindy sprays with on the with the paintbrush. Um, that was a marker. Uh, the Faber Castell uh, pit pens. Um, that one. There's the pan pastel there. There's the paint. There's the Lindy's. Kind of hard to see. But the markers, um, there's a marker. The green is the marker there. This one here. That was the uh, pit pens. So, yes, your markers will be more brilliant, I think. And the Lindy's will work. But um, as far as uh, if you wanted to black out, you could use paint. It doesn't come off once it's seat, uh, set by a heat gun. And this um, 
does not curl. To see the color, what? Oh, we have a big leg. Yeah. So, I just thought it was kind of cool. It's just very hard. So your light will be like that. So you can still see the light through it. See how you can see the brush marks in the paint? So your Lindy's There's your pan pastel right there. That's watercolor. That was a watercolor too, I think. And then that was alcohol. This one here is alcohol ink. So you can use your alcohol inks. You'll just get different um, brush stroke marks. Yeah, it is different, but I thought it was really uh, interesting because uh, you would get that. You would still see the color. It might not be as brilliant as your alcohol markers, but you'd still see it. Um, I know I did. I did notice too that um, when the light is on, it kind of. Uh, um, whites out a lot of color too because the bulb's so close. So if you put something with a little bit of opaqueness with that, maybe it wouldn't do that is what I'm thinking. What, are you, what am I going to use? <laughs> I think I might use a combination of a few different things. So I was thinking of Probably, because I don't mind having texture. It's like a painting, eh? Um, or a watercolor painting. Sometimes you have uh, texture in your paintings. This one, I think, what I want to do is I'm going to black out the bottom area of, of some of this. Around the moon. And part way up the sun will be blacked out. And then the clouds here will be done in a... Um, grays and maybe a little bit of blue and then uh, maybe the light will come down this way so the this bottom area where the bulb is because I'll have a lot of blacked out areas it's going to look a little more um, brighter in the areas that won't be blacked out if you know what I mean and I could actually do the the sun in a hmm, I don't know. I just been my brain's been going over time <laughs> with this. Because I just like to experiment. <laughs> but I was thinking this paper or this mylar, whatever is the coating that's on this is beautiful for a lot of other media so I think this would really look awesome used with pan pastels because it does take the pastel really well I was quite surprised so I might um, order a couple sheets of that and play with it I did try the alcohol inks as far as trying to make it um, move. It doesn't. It, it goes out a bit and then when you take the um, emulsion, it doesn't do anything at all to it. It just, it's stuck where it is. So that was interesting. Hey Christine! 
yeah, it was really cool. I really uh, am enjoying it. Um, so I have been taking some classes from a, this artist that uses uh, uh, UART. So a sanded uh, paper for her watercolor, and it gives it a really different effect. And it almost reminded me of how watercolor would work on this. So, you, you know, you never know. <laughs> okay, so I do have a few palettes here where I could put inks, whatever. I've got assortment of inks and in acrylic and in um, alcohol around me. I do have a few Copics, not many. Uh, I don't typically use a whole lot of um, alcohol markers. I'm not a, a marker person per se. I use it here and there, but not in a full painting. Um, I do have the uh, pit pens. That's the Indian ink, and it's permanent when dry. Um, I have an assortment of also these ones here, the uh, Spectrum Noir. They're an alcohol ink also. Had these laying around forever. And then I have... Um, FW acrylic inks, some Liquitex acrylic inks, and then I have the Lindy sprays, and you could just use your paintbrush. Uh, I'm going to try that. I bought some sanded paper for the powder blender and never used it. Oh, you bought some sanded paper? Yeah, it's, it makes a really, really unique flow. Um, it's more loose watercolor, I could, you could say. Um, the thing I liked about it is in this class, we're using it with uh, pastels over top of the watercolor and um, also colored pencil with it. Really gives it an awesome effect. Yeah, Devin, I was surprised too, but it doesn't move. It just doesn't move. <laughs> it was like, wow. So I think right now, so what I was thinking, um, I could do the sun first. I don't think I'll be able to get this all done in one stream, but I can either continue in another stream or I'll just uh, post a bunch of pictures. You laugh at me a lot. <laughs> hey, we all done that, Janet. <laughs> um, did, Janet, did you know that you can use um, 1500 grit auto body sandpaper. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's hard to find um, it in a cream color or a craft color, but you can use that too. It's cheaper. All right, let's do something. So I think First of all, I'll probably try some, I think I'll do the, the face first, so we can do, I'm going to do it with a brush. And I'm going to use some Lindy's. Let's see, I've got some different yellows here. We'll see what we can create. And I'm 
So this one is just the Flat Fabio, I think they're called. Pineapple Paradise. So I'm just going to put a little bit in a well. And this is more of an orange color. Let's see what other colors. Um, got a nice bright. Maybe this one here. This one is red hot poker orange. Just spilling it over here because I don't want to spill it over top. Because. <laughs> This stuff, once it's down, it's down. You can't remove it. And let's see, maybe uh, I got that one, I got this one, and maybe an orange, soft orange. And I'm going to get piece of plastic to put over top. I don't want to spill this. Now, the trick too, I think, with this is the size of brush you're using. Now, around the smaller areas, you want a smaller brush naturally, but um, I think, too, the brush should be a fairly soft brush, not too um, stiff. Let's see. Checking my brushes, which one I want to use. I don't want too big a brush, but I don't want too small either. Because the smaller the brush, the more strokes you have to make, which means more marks. So maybe I'll use this one. This one's fairly soft. I can use the tip. So I'm going to wet it first, just so that my brush is and paper towel. Now you can mix this with um, a little bit of water if you wanted to, too. Oof, I had a dirty brush. Oh, I got black on mine. Kind of like watercolor, so we'll see. So the lighter areas I want probably in her face. So I just thought it would be fun to try it this way. And going up into her And it always looks a little darker because this um, material that is on the top of this mylar, it's almost like a clay-based 
top. I'm not sure what's in it, but you can tell it it's absorbs whatever it is. Um, watercolor did um, go on it, not too bad. So if you wanted to use this for um, some watercolor, you could use this. You just don't want to um, use it on this if you're going to be uh, changing it out a lot. And I don't, I'm not sure what kind of um, light fastness this would give watercolor. Could be that uh, it might fade the colors. I don't know. Something you'd have to play with. But if you have alcohol um, like the alcohol for We've been playing with with Upo type of thing. What is it called? Uh, this stuff. You can use that too. If so if you don't have markers, try using that if you have some. You just have to uh, use a little bit of alcohol with it or emulsion stuff that come with it. Um, I imagine you could probably even use ink pads. Why not? Put one in a Being it's a light color, you're not going to see the brush marks as much on a light color. So we'll see once we start doing darker how much uh, brush mark we'll get. But that's when you can also use your brush marks, marks to your advantage for um, directional flow of um, texture, that type of thing. And then I can, we'll see about going over top of this with markers maybe. Who knows? We're going to experiment. So this one is going to be going to my granddaughter and the uh, other uh, coloring sheet she can do for Christmas. I think she'll love it. She's 13, so she's into <laughs> the crazy lighting and <laughs> that type of thing. She's going to love it.
It's almost like watercoloring using this. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I think she'll love it. Let's see. I think that's part of it. You could actually, if you wanted to do a really cool background, if you had, the, if you didn't mind spending a lot of time on it, you could um, do the background first by using um, a mask, like you know the what do you call it, frisket mask, not the liquid stuff, but the, the um, plastic that you cut. And then use these sprays to go over top of it. That would look really neat. Okay. Do some of the orange. It's a little darker. And we oh, we'll wait till that dries, I guess. A real dark color here. To go inside the lip. And the more concentrate that's left on there to dry, the darker it gets. I do know that this fades out once the light's on, so you kind of have some of them you'll have to really put a lot of color in, I think. Did you find that, Dee Dee? That once the light's on, it fades out? She'll love it more if you buy her cool products to use on it. She can love it. She's already got, you know, the red light in her room and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, let's dry it. You can use the heat gun, it doesn't do anything.
you can see the uh, dry and wet areas, so it's got to be some kind of a clay-based spray that they put on. Very interesting. Yeah, the remote. Yeah, I saw that. It changes all kinds of colors. and So, yeah, it would give you a different look changing up the colors that you use. She'll, she'll have a, <laughs> a riot with that. Almost dry. Markers here. Let's see what. I wonder what this will do over top of this. We'll take it off. marker. So it depends on, you know, how detailed you want to get. Yeah, they all work. Sister Just had to look at that for a minute. There we go. Um They were green eyes, I guess. I don't know. Let's try if this moves at all while it's wet. A little bit. Need a stiffer brush. It does. Awesome. So if you wet the area and use your pit markers, you can move it. That's cool. Eyeshadow. Got 
shadowing around the eye in there underneath it. nostril. So that's interesting. If you wet the area, it bleeds out a little bit. It's kind of like um, watercolor wood. So you don't have a hard line. That's cool. Fun to experiment. So these are just Lindy's sprays that I'm using. Wetting the area and then just throwing some of this color in. And it moves a little more instead of staying in one spot. So that's cool. Neat. A little bit darker under her chin. Make some dark areas. So I'm just wetting this with plain water. And I'm using Glindy's stamp sprays. And then it kind of moves like watercolor. So that's neat. Because then you don't have to worry about um, hard lines. Mind you, it's going to take a little longer to dry, but I like the look. I kind of like using the paintbrush. So depending on, you have to make sure you get the right assortment of colors to do this. Fun. Tips in the dark.
not too worried about if I go outside the line here because it's going to be black. bigger areas and it stays wet for a while so They're very cool. Like anything else, there's a learning curve, but that's what I enjoy. It's learning a new thing with either the product or the substrate. See what you can do with it. And the it it's very sim similar to using watercolor paper in a way because um, wherever you put the water your paint will only go there it won't spread out so it doesn't bleed that's the nice thing about it You kind of have an effect of watercolor with this. So, if you're interested in these, check out color lamp he's on Instagram I believe it's uh, yep color lamp on Instagram and on Facebook the coloring lamp and then his website coloring lamp a great way to display your art and I'm like I said I'm gonna I'm gonna order some uh, of the blank sheets and see what I can do for my, make something of my own using maybe pastels I don't know the pan pastels did work on this which was very surprising <laughs> so why not Give it a try. Might be a new type of substrate we can use. You can branch out.
quite fun. Be a little lighter on the top here. Although she is the sun. <laughs> See how bright it's going to be. Might not be bright enough. You never know. Put some darker areas in here. Thanks, Judy. They're fun. It does kind of remind me of watercolor, though, doing it with the uh, Lindy sprays. Let it bleed. Thanks, Devin. Thank you so much, Dee. I probably would never have tried it if it weren't for winning at your stream. Very generous of you to have that for a um, giveaway. And very generous of Ian, or Ethan, Ethan, to uh, send it to me. And he sent me another one. He sent two. And so this is the one that I'm giving my granddaughter, and then the other one I'm going to use for my artwork. Many possibilities. Dabs. A little bit of
And I did try um, colored pencil on this too. And it does go on, but it's very, you can't blend with it. So I did try all kinds of stuff. I just thought it was cool that I could put um, pan pastels on it, though. <laughs> that was a big surprise. I wasn't expecting that. Very cool. I think I got all the little doodads. So you can make areas a little darker if you want. You just wait till it dries up a bit. Now, her eyes dry, so I wonder what color. Should do her eyebrows though. I think I'll do them dark. bit of green. Mm. I got some green here. Just need a tab. That's all I could use. A little bit more green in here.
see if I use some yellow in here. What will it do? Well, it brightens it up a bit. And darken this area. that dry and I think I'm going to do the Here, these are those uh, Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. This is supposed to be raindrops. It's not really a blue, but we'll see what it looks like once it's dry. I can always go over it. Okay, let's dry it up a bit. My place. Okay, we'll just move on to the center here for a bit while that dries. So we have little trees and clouds and I think, I think the cloud, well they're threatening because there's lightning here. <laughs> so we can do the trees in this green that I already have out here. Or we could do them in Let's see what I got here. Spectrum Noir. I have some greens here. 
I don't have a lot. I don't have the full line. I just have a few odds and sods. But enough to do. Let's see. All right. I don't know how accurate these are as far as color. Let's see. Just do a bunch of marks. going to be fairly textured as far as the brush strokes. Is that much darker? Yeah. Actually, let's see what it does when we just put a marker over it. Doesn't look bad. Do the same on these so we get them all the same. So I'm thinking more about textures and stuff like that with this. Just just because I know that the the marks are going to be showing once the light's on. So you may as well give it a reason for showing. Um, some people like a really smooth look. Um, I'm not a marker artist. So if you're capable of doing that on this stuff, you're fantastic. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how to begin. Um, probably Dee Dee would know more, a lot more than me. So maybe she can let us know more about that. Oh, the, this guy? Yeah, he's not impressed. It's raining. Although he should like the rain. Because I don't know if you can blend with your markers on this stuff. I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not a marker person, so this is a first for me, really. Uh, the trick with markers is keeping a wet edge. Do you find, though, that this 
um, keeps the wet edge though. You can blend markers, yeah. Is it similar to paper? Long enough to blend, okay. Or marker paper, I guess. It is, okay. I'll have to practice. Let's do this guy up here. Let's start from the bottom. Uh, video shows how I did it. Uh, oops, I was doing it. <laughs> yeah, there's a leg. I think these are great though. Like, I could see, I think it would look really cool myself trying pan pastels into a, a scene or a water underwater type of thing. I think that'd look cool. too light. Uh, let's see what we got in here. Mm. this color light? Yeah. Uh, a pan pastel beach sunset would be pretty. Yeah, it would. Well, when I ordered the paper, We'll experiment, have some fun. I was surprised though that the alcohol inks didn't um, move like on Nupo paper. That was surprising. So I thought for sure it would spread, but it didn't. So I thought the um, 
if you could get it to move like on Yupo, I thought it would look really cool as just doing the whole thing in um, kind of a liquidy looking abstract and then just have this print shining through would be kind of cool. Yeah, he's a grumpy tree. <laughs> it's morning time. I'll leave those out because I need them again. And let's fix that blue up a little bit. It's just one of these. It needs to be a little bluer. or not. I do this. Not really. Those ones don't really move, but And then, how am I going to do these clouds? Let's see, uh, we got some cool grays here. Maybe in. Fairly dark. Um, all right, let's see. Don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm going to try it anyways. <laughs> so, my version of clouds. This one works. 
works or not. Nope. Just make it darker, I guess. Just go over it. Fuzzy clouds. These get darker, I think. Darker clouds down here.
threatening clouds. Finish the clouds. Probably, I don't know if this color is going to show it much, but we'll see. getting stormier as it goes across. <laughs> This will be the night area. So we'll have some darker areas for clouds.
a bit. And this area here gets a little lighter. Dark around the bottom, lighter at the top, I think. Any questions from anybody? Feel free. Hey, Jonica. Thanks for popping in, Devin. Enjoy your day. fairly dark some areas on the bottom of the clouds that would be the darkest Blue did I use? I should have left it out. Uh, oh, there it is. Drops. Might as well do them all.
I wonder if I can, well, I should be able to go over top of these with um, watercolor or a brush with uh, ink on it, maybe? Hmm, let's see. Let's try. Is it this one? This is the pit marker. bright yellow. I'm just going to do the top part of these light lightning bolts with some streaks. Three of those. Now, let's put this over here. Oh, it's a cloud there, too. And then I'm going to do. plant let's see I'm gonna wet it first and then dip my brush in the Lindy's sprays Seems to go on better that way for me anyways. Kind of like watercolor then. So, if you got Lindy sprays, try them out. Or archival um, ink refills, those would work too. Because it's permanent when it's on.
All right. And the bird, I think I'm going to do him at Bluebird, I guess. So I got some more Lindy's here. I'm just going to pour a little bit of blue, hopefully a little this time. <laughs> And we'll do his tail in blue. I think we'll leave his chest gray. Lighter blue, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I missed a, missed a bit of... Uh, Darker. Yeah. And fix that, I guess. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, they're a good marker. If you want to uh, need some markers to do this. Paint his eyelid. Give his beak color. Some yellow. And let's see, maybe a little bit more blue on his. I'll have to wait till it's dry. Now I can fix this up here.
that. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to put a little bit more dark in here in the cloud. Right here. Threatening clouds. Rid of the thunder and lightning. Well, do more over there later. All right, so what I'm thinking for in between here, so I block out most of the light. I'm thinking of putting in a black. And I'm thinking of putting in this ink, Bombay, or you have something even a a dark uh, I'm just gonna see how this works if this doesn't I know it once it's dry it's it doesn't scratch off but I don't know how much of a brush mark you're gonna be able to get um, let's see I mean, I, I don't know if I have a black marker that will be dark enough. So, let's see. And the trick with this, I think, is using a fairly um, wide brush. And so... I have a bright here. And it's going to take a bit, but I know I've got lots of black ink.
he could probably use craft paint because it does the stuff does take acrylic paint too it's just that you won't I don't know how many coats you would need And I'm going to probably stop as I as I reach um, that cloud. And then I think it'll just be like sun or the blue sky. takes concentration. I want to make as less um, marks, like stroke marks, so there's not uh, too much line work going on in the 
black. I know there's going to be some, but if I can get it on um, reasonably thick, we'll see. I might have to go over top of it again. We'll see. If so, I might go over top of it with um, acrylic. So just the bottom part here is going to be uh, filled with black. And that way I think the um, when the light's on, it's going to look cool. Then you're not going to see where the bulb is necessarily. Um, it seems brighter where the bulb is. And it kind of gets flashed out because the bulb's so close. So I just thought it might look kind of cool. That's why I think um, if somebody did silhouettes on the bottom part and then colored backgrounds on the uh, other, or even bits of uh, color through the silhouette would be cool. Like a, anything really, you could do um, leaves, you could do all kinds of stuff. People. You could do Christmas themed. Any holiday themed, really, with a silhouette. Halloween. I'll do it a little bit and so you'll see exactly what it's kind of looking like. And then time is it? Yeah, I'm going to have to go soon. My son has a, an appointment and these dogs are crazy right now. New pup is good, but it can be a handful. Maybe put an old white lampshade at a thrift store and paint or pencil a scene on it the same way. Wonder how that would work. You could. Um, if you can find mylar thick enough, you could take the, a lot of the old lamps had those um, metal frames. And a lot of times the, um, the lamp itself had mylar in it, and they'd put fabric over top of the my mylar. So, you could probably try it. You got to lose. That's the fun of doing these things, is seeing it's a new product, so you like to play with it, see what else you can do with it. <laughs> At least that's what I always do. I'm always thinking outside the box. What else? What else can I do? How else can I use this?
Uh, she's upstairs with my son. I imagine she's pestering him too. Alright, let's see. Once that's dry, I think it'll probably be pretty good. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to stop for now because i got to go upstairs, take over dog duty. <laughs> but I hope you'll give this a try. It's really cool. Um, check them out. They're online. They have um, different size ones, so they're at different um, price points. And uh, Or just order the this stuff. You can buy these sheets separate with a print on them or blank. Or, or blank. <coughs> <coughs> so, excuse me, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy some more um, blanks and see what I can do with it. Maybe even uh, using rice papers on them. Why not? Decoupage on them. Rice papers are see-through. I think that would look really cool. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Even fabric would, would work, probably. So I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic uh, weekend. And um, for the members, I will be having a live stream for the Blooming Artist on Saturday at 1 Eastern, this Saturday. And we'll be doing something a little different. Um, I found a new way of making a spine, um, spine signatures in a spine without using glue or thread. <laughs> it's it's awesome. So we'll be doing one of those and making a little book. And then um, for the budding artist, I will have a video up for you on Monday. So make sure to um, look out for that. And we'll see you Tuesday if you're not in the membership. And have a fantastic and creative weekend, everybody. Bye for now.